Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar hosted by the Faculty of Science at Mandela University. The title of the webinar is Open Day 2020, Get to Know the Faculty of Science at Mandela University. My name is Ajindin Moronga, and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Science at Mandela University. The Faculty of Science at Mandela University is reinventing and reshaping itself to become a faculty that is truly 21st century African Faculty of Science. In addition to participating in today's webinar, I invite you to learn more and join us in this exciting and challenging journey by visiting our webpage, Facebook page, our Twitter handle, LinkedIn, and Insta Instagram. Joining me this evening are the directors of four schools in the Faculty of Science. They will take you through their school's activities and programs. After all the presenters have presented, we will open the webinar to questions and answer session. Please post your questions during and after the presentations. We will only address your questions only during the Q&A session after all the presenters have presented. Your active participation is important through the session. I will now ask our presenters from the four different schools within the Faculty of Science to introduce themselves as they present their schools. I would like to also acknowledge the presence of Eden Radio Station, which is Eden FM, especially their listeners who are joining us through the radio. Uh, you are all welcome. I would like now to call upon the first presenter of this evening, and that will be Dr. Schmidt from the school based at our George campus. Dr. Schmidt. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. So as you've heard, I'm Anton Schmidt, um, and I'm the director of the School of Natural Resource Management situated in George. And so I would also just like to take this opportunity to um, welcome the Eden FM listeners. Of course, they, they're from my region. And I'd just like to take you through a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, those of you that are able to watch it via the webinar. And my first slide, you should see uh, a nice picture of our campus there. It is situated approximately five kilometers outside the town of George. And it is ideally situated to, to offer the programs that we do offer. As you can see there, we, uh, it's an idyllic um, situation. We lie at the foothills of the Otanequa Mountains and we are surrounded by indigenous forest and pine plantations and agricultural land. And we, we often walk straight out of our lecture halls and into this open air laboratory. So it's really perfectly situated for the following um, six programs that we offer on the campus namely forestry, wood technology, agricultural management, nature conservation, game ranch management, and felt fire management. Now you'll see there that the game ranch management program is marked with an asterisk. And that is because we've decided that uh, it's, it's offered on two campuses. It's offered in George and it's also offered on the Addo campus close to Port Elizabeth. And next year will be the last year that we'll be offering it on the George campus. And simply because the Addo campus is much more closely situated to one of the main game ranching regions in the country. And so we felt that it makes more sense to offer it from, from that site. Um, I just briefly want to, to take you through the structure of our, our programs. Typically, if you came to the George campus, you would start by, by doing a diploma, a three-year diploma. So on the slide there, it's, it's um, clearly indicated in green, and you'll see that the, 
the middle year, the second year, um, it's indicated that this is a practical year, a, work, a, a year of work, what we call work integrated learning. So all our diplomas in, in, in all the programs um, have this year of work integrated learning, but it's not always in the second year. For instance, in our nature conservation program, it's the third year that is the practical year. In our agricultural program, it's straddled between the second year and the third year. Nevertheless, you'll do at least one year of work integrated learning and two years of academic study on campus. Then once you've done a diploma, um, you can move on and do an advanced diploma in any one of our, uh, in five of our programs. And this offers an opportunity to specialize a bit more in the field that you have chosen. Following an advanced diploma, we essentially would be preparing you for a research career. So if you wanted to go and um, into a research career, then you would typically take an honors. So we will be offering an honors in um, natural resource management, which is a year course. And after that, then you would be able to do an MSc followed by a PhD should you want to. Typically, an MSc and P PhD takes you anything between two to three years to complete, respectively. Um, on the next slide, you'll see I've marked the Certificate of Felt Fire Management separate um, to the Diploma and Honours um, Qualification Framework, and that's simply because this is it's a, a year certificate course that you can do as a standalone course. You could do it before you did a diploma, or you could even do it after a diploma or an honours. And this is a, a very nice add-on um, one-year certificate course to do for anybody that is focusing on a career in natural resource management. And that's simply because managing felt fires is an important part um, of any manager, whether it's a forest forester or an agriculturalist or even a nature conservation person. Um, then just to give you a bit of background of our philosophy of learning and teaching in the School of Natural Resource Management, we um, like to, to uh, emphasize that, you know, in order to, to run a viable um, operation in natural resource management. It is important that it's grounded on the fundamentals of sustainability, which um, really involves taking into account not only your environment, but also business aspects as well as social aspects. So all our programs are, are grounded on these three pillars of sustainability, shall I say. And the attributes that we would like to instill in our graduates are a, a strong environmental ethic, entrepreneurship. We would like our students also, once they've qualified, to be able to make decisions in a very complex environment. And so those are, are in brief, the attributes that we would like our students to have. We would also like them to be able to um, be ready for the workplace as soon as they leave, once they've qualified with us. And so I think that year of work integrated um, learning that we give them um, helps them really integrate practical experience with the theoretical knowledge that they attain at university. And it certainly makes them ready for the workplace once they leave. Um, if one goes on to, to study further, in other words, what we would call postgraduate students, in other words, doing an honours, master's and, and a doctorate eventually, um, you would be able to do research in forestry, agriculture, nature conservation, any of those lines. But on the campus, we also have two specialist units, shall I say, research entities, one being the sustainability research unit, and it actually hosts an international laboratory, research laboratory, uh, which we call rehabs, reconciling ecological and human adaptations for biosphere sustainability. And this international laboratory is um, actually uh, a French 
um, laboratory, the French CSIR, has got many of these laboratories scattered around the world, of which there are two in Africa and one is on our campus. And both the Sustainability Research Unit and this international laboratory, they really focus on man's influence in the functioning and management of ecosystems. Um, if you would like to then come to our campus and register for any of our courses, whether it's undergraduate or postgraduate, then I've just put up on a slide there, you would be welcome to contact our admissions office george.admissions at mandela.ac.za and then they would be able to give you further information. Thank you very much. At, at this stage, um, I would like to just uh, hand over to my colleague, Professor, professor Zeni Chentu. Um, he is a professor in chemistry and he will introduce his school that he's um, the director of. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Schmidt, um, and uh, welcome everybody who has tuned into this uh, webinar, and uh, welcome also the Eden FM uh, listeners. Uh, I'm the director of the School of Biomolecular and Chemical Sciences. Um, as you can see, I'm sharing my presentation now. As you can see, it, uh, it, it comprises of several departments in which, uh, uh, which are your biochemistry and microbiology, chemistry, physiology, and textile science. And textile science is a postgrad uh, department. Uh, it doesn't cover really your undergrad programs. Uh, the three departments that are focused on the undergrad level is your biochem, microchemistry, and physiology. I, I thought I would start off by um, I thought I would start off by sharing what a, what a, um, what really is a degree program and what is a diploma program in terms of the South African Qualifications Authority because some students get caught up in this um, because they are fundamentally different in approaches. As you can see, a bachelor's degree is a general degree. It's, it's supposed to train one in, in sort of well-rounded, broad education, which leads to general employment and not necessarily focused employment. And it can also lead one to a postgraduate program. While a diploma is more specific, in our case, uh, in our school, we are more focused on the industry specific uh, knowledge and, and one is to pick up the skills that are necessary for those industries. So there's a lot of specialization in terms of applying the knowledge and getting the workplace skills. Hence, uh, the diplomas typically have a year of training in industry. So that's typically what the uh, diplomas uh, would look like. So now if I can go to each of these departments, of course, biochemistry looks at things uh, at, say, chemical reactions at a cellular level and sometimes even the response of the whole organism. So you need to think in terms of um, the molecule of life, DNA, your carbohydrates, your amino acids, your peptides, up to the big proteins. What I've got here as a second picture is actually a protease of the coronavirus too which is doing its rounds now, which was isolated in China. And scientists are busy looking at how they could actually uh, attack uh, this enzyme to immobilize the virus. And if you want to think in terms of microbiology, you're talking things that are small, your microorganisms, your bacteria, your viruses, et cetera, et cetera. So literally, we pick up viruses with our hands everywhere. Uh, that's why. It, actually sounds metaphorical when the president says it, that it's in our hands, but literally we do pick the virus up with our hands and we spread it. And as you can see, nowadays we are dealing with a very deadly virus, but not all microorganisms are bad. Think of cheese making and yogurt making with um, 
your lactic acid bacteria. So some, some bacteria are actually good, while some are really bad. Now, if you do biochemistry, of course, biochemistry will start at a second year level, as well as uh, microbiology. So uh, before that, you will probably do a first year in chemistry, physics, mathematics, zoology, botany, before you can progress to biochemistry and microbiology. And these are some of the typical courses that they cover, like your genetics, metabolism, protein technology, et cetera. And of course, because they study things at cellular level, they can then be able to get involved in research on some of these uh, diseases. When it comes to microbiology, of course, I've already mentioned that uh, one would do a lot of uh, bacteriology or virology or mycology where you deal with um, with fungi and of course if you progress then you would go into honors etc etc where one could get involved in medical microbiology or industrial microbiology such as what i mentioned now about making cheese which makes use of the good bacteria Right, in terms of their re uh, careers, of course, they get in involved in a lot uh, from medical research. We can think of in agriculture, your agriculture, your ARC, your, your food industry. I mean, you would remember not too long ago, 2017, 2018, there was an out outbreak of listeriosis which uh, came from some uh, meat processing uh, facility. So microbiologists should be able to be able to detect these uh, to look at the uh, level of uh, toxins in food. And there are other careers, of course, uh, as outlined in this uh, presentation, up to designing drugs uh, for certain diseases. But one is to go deep into the molecular level. In terms of physiology department, also it starts at second year, just like biochemistry and microbiology. And one would of course need the similar type of base of zoology, botany, chemistry, physics, and mathematics before they do physiology too. And of course, physiology is all about uh, how the body functions. You know, It's all your mechanical and your chemical bodily processes. And the focus, of course, is on health and diseases. So the main aim is that they ought to be detected uh, when a human is healthy or is diseased. And so they go into a lot of things, a lot of uh, systemic physiology. Remember, if you're in high school, but there's all sorts of uh, physiological uh, systems, your cardiovascular, your muscular, your immune system, your nervous systems, etc. So they go deep into those if one ought to focus on health and well-being of humans. And of course, naturally, then at research level, they also look into those systems uh, to be able to understand uh, when humans are diseased. And they also deal with diseases themselves, not at the level of treatment of diseases, but also at the level of diagnosis of diseases, such as with uh, gold nanoparticles, which is one of the recent things that are discovered nowadays. Right, and of course, uh, foundations, uh, foundation for careers um, in physiology, you can get involved in medical science. All I've talked about is a lot of medical stuff, less to do with anatomy, but rather functional anatomy that supports the physiology, that is how the human body functions. So they get involved, they, of course, in forensics, uh, they understand how to handle tissue, while a scientist, maybe a chemist, may not understand how to handle tissue when it comes to forensics, so your physiology can get involved there. Now, in chemistry, it's slightly different in that you've got diplomas and degrees in the same department. And so I've just highlighted them with, um, with color. Um, and of course, chemistry also goes out there and interacts with a lot of public. You can see uh, they like to create these spectacular uh, chemical experiments. 
And if we look at the first diploma, the first one is focused on analytical skills and analytical techniques and less on the fundamentals of chemistry. So it doesn't teach you the discipline. The degree would teach you the discipline of chemistry. While this one is more focused on analysis. And of course, it's important, uh, even though they service their service department in industries where they would look at uh, do analysis that is required and uh, also develop some methods. They can help in the design of instruments as well. They can also market chemical products and instruments. They can get involved in regulatory activities. When I think of this, I always reminded of the pineapple scandal in the Eastern Cape where the pineapples reached Europe and were rejected because of the high cadmium level. So analyst would have worked all of that. Where would the cadmium have come from? And in that case, it happened to have come from fertilizer that was obtained in some other country. Also, there's a, another one in Austria where actually the wineries um, simply added a diethylene glycol in their wines to make them sweeter and more full bodied. And that was detected in Germany, you know, and the wine industry in Austria went down after that scandal because that chemical is actually a toxin. And so it was a bad thing to do. So analysts get involved in dealing with these uh, difficult things. Right, diploma of course in polymer technology focuses on paint, rubber and plastics. So typically one would be dealing with issues of making car tires, molding plastic products and mixing paint, etc., etc. And there's a lot of places in South Africa that have uh, these industries and some of our students end up overseas as well. Chemical process technology, the focus here is on operations in industry because these things happen in vessels that are that are, that you cannot see what is going on in there. So one has got to do monitoring. So typically students would be trained maybe in a virtual space like this, how to operate a plant, how to add things to the reactor, what to monitor, but eventually you've got to take them to to a mini plant which we have where they can actually monitor these things in real time. So they've got to know what the numbers mean as well before they can operate at a high level in industry. These are some of these industry, your mining, your oil industries, your fine chemicals and household products. And finally now on the BSc chemistry, which I said was less focused on skill, but on fundamentals and that is the case. But uh, unfortunately, some of these students have to compete with those highly trained specialists from the diploma, like who do analytical chemistry, some of them who exit before they, without going on to the higher degrees. And of course, to get into the BSc itself, you need uh, much higher credits than to get into the diploma, but these details you can find elsewhere. Mathematics is also important. If you're going to do chemistry with biochem, micro, 60% maths is okay. But if you're going to do chemistry with physics and the mathematics, then you need 65%. And of course, also a BSc chemistry graduate can get involved in industry and other activities and study beyond to become a lecturer. Just finally, some slides on what chemists do beyond your degree. Some get involved in microalgae technologies, algae to fuels technologies, rubber products, all sorts of uh, things, even manufacturing drugs. We have a unit right here that manufactures drugs using micro reactors, very small reactors, very tiny. But if you're going to apply them on a large scale, then you need to pack them, many of them in series to do that. But this is good because we import a lot of stuff. We import chemicals, we import drugs, and it costs South Africa quite a lot. Look at this, just over 10 years, 120 billion rands just spent importing drugs from India. So some of these can be made in South Africa. We just have to build the expertise that are required to do that. And uh, there are some uh, websites you can follow there if you 
have some questions uh, on AS scores, et cetera, et cetera, and also if one wants to apply online. Thank you, everybody. I'm now going to hand over to Professor Wesson, who's going to talk about his school. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and especially uh, Asian FM listeners. Um, you're very welcome this evening. Um, I'm going to switch over to my presentation, which is on the school of which I am the director. Um, and there it is. It's the School of Computer Science, um, Mathematics and Applied Mathematics, Physics and statistics. Right. Uh, the first department is the Department of Computing Sciences. It's called Computing Sciences because it includes traditional computer science and information system. There's a picture on the left of Professor Brenda Scholz, who's the head of Department of Computing Sciences and some students on the right who are sharing, uh, working on a particular laptop. Now, in computing sciences, uh, they call it research, but you get lots of opportunity to play with new technology and be creative as part of your courses. So there are courses on mobile applications and mobile design. There are courses on multimedia and how to write and develop multimedia applications. And there are research facilities, uh, like for example, this um, Smart Lab, which was recently sponsored by Amazon Web Services and Telcom under the Center for Excellence uh, umbrella. And this lab gives us lots of opportunities to do research in the fourth industrial revolution area. In other words, using AI and using sensors to detect what is actually happening in the laboratory. Um, this is a picture that was taken in, um, in Zanzibar of three master students with their supervisor, Professor Brenda Scholz. It's just an example to show you that our master students and PhD students get a chance to travel, to attend conferences, and to present their research. And you'll see some comments here as well from other students who have done postgrad research in the department. One of the goals of the Department of Computing Sciences is to make a difference. Um, and that means making a difference both from the social and from an environmental perspective. The top picture is a group picture of a lot of students in the department, together with some of the academics, and you can see they're very varied, and the devices that they're working on vary from traditional laptops to uh, mobile devices on the left-hand side. Now, careers in computing sciences can vary widely depending on the interest of the particular student. So you could become a software developer in which you write code. There's an example of some code shown in the top left. You could become a project manager when you deal with customers um, and you actually run projects. You could become a data scientist in which you analyze data that is collected um, in the wild, a software quality tester, or an IS auditor if you also have some accounting background. And not finally, but not last, you can become a user interface or design specialist when you work with people to improve the design and the usability of a particular system or um, uh, mobile application that is being developed. The degrees in computer science, uh, firstly, 
The first degree is the BSc Computer Science, which takes three years. But you notice it can be combined with primarily three mathematical sciences. So that's physics, applied maths, and statistics. 80 to 90% of the computer modules are the same in the BSc Computer Science and the BCom Computer Science and Information System, which takes the same amount of time but combines computing science to subjects like accounting, economics, and business management. You can also do a BCom Information Systems or a BCom Accounting Science which is a professional degree, which can lead to, um, to becoming a chartered accountant. Mathematics and applied mathematics. Yeah, mathematics is another department in the school. Um, and if we read that quote there from 1989, it says, mathematics is a remarkable sprawling riot of imagination ranging from pure intellectual curiosity to nuts and bolts utility, and it's all one thing. And there's some three very interesting diagrams um, that were all generated by mathematical equations were shown underneath that quote. Give you an example of what you can do and what can be produced using that. The Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics consists of two subjects. Mathematics and Applied Mathematics are separate subjects that you can major in together if you want to. Um, mathematics typically in, um, involves two broad areas, namely analysis and algebra. With analysis, the main topic is calculus, and in algebra, it's linear algebra. And here's an example of a, um, a teaching facility, uh, a lecture room where um, a lecturer is actually, there's the head of the department, uh, Professor Jake Moritz, is giving a lecture on balancing chemical equations using a matrix. Pure versus applied curriculum content. The difference between mathematics and applied mathematics is the focus on whether the content is pure, then it will be mathematics, or applied. So the applied mathematics modules focus on mathematical analysis methods, which can be used in a range of science and industrial situations. The first two years is mostly maths for application, um, and that involves calculus and linear algebra. From third years onwards, they begin to account of proper pure mathematics, where you uh, subjects like the mathematical justification techniques from the first two years are presented, and also the topic of abstraction in mathematics. Postgraduate studies are offered in mathematics and applied mathematics from honors level up to PhD. And these are um, on a research basis only, not coursework. The department, here are some pictures from the Department of Mathematics, pictures of students working in labs, uh, students in, a, in, a, in a, a lab venue where they're being taught, and the students solving a mathematical problem on a board. Physics is another department which is an integral part of the School of Computer Science, Maths, Physics and Stats. And their graduate skills and attributes are very similar to the skills that you will need in the rest of the school. Especially the experimental skills and the thorough investigative skills. But you also need excellent communication skills, sound knowledge of physics, and being skilled in mathematical modeling. So you'll start to see the links between the different uh, departments, the different subjects, and why they are put together into one school. 
academic program in physics uh, consists of at undergrad level, you will have a number of physics modules from classical mechanics, electrodynamics, thermodynamics, optics, electronics, and modern physics. The BAC Honours Curriculum takes these topics further and focuses on quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, solid state physics, and statistical physics. Remember that an honours is required before you can go on to study a master's or a PhD in physics. Postgraduate research and training in the Department of Physics is focused on four main areas. The first one is very relevant in the telecommunications industry, is optical fiber communication. The second one is semiconductor materials and nanostructures. The third one is becoming even more relevant in, in a country like South Africa, where we have a shortage of natural resources for energy. They are researching solar energy and wind energy. And electron microscopy is focused on the large center for high resolution um, electron microscopy, which is the biggest in the country. Statistics is the last department in the school, um, and statistics focuses on the study of the methods and the tools used to analyze, present, and model data to make predictions and decisions. And statistics is basically a multidisciplinary subject. So it's become an essential tool for financial analysts, managers, government, business industry, and academics. And there are a number of opportunities to combine a knowledge of statistics in a number of different fields. To become a quantitative analyst, a data scientist, where you actually analyze large amounts of data, a risk analyst, which we have needed in the recent period of COVID-19, in government institutions, and in actuarial science. Now, I've included this quote, which, although it is more than 10 years old, is as valid today as it was 11 years ago. And it's by Hal Varian, who is the chief economist at Google, and he said, the sexy job in the next 10 years will be statisticians. I'm not kidding. Just to show you the multi-disciplinary uh, approach of statistics, uh, the main focus in the science faculty is integration with physical and computing sciences, but it also integrates for health and medical sciences, particularly in forecasting diseases, diseases like listeriosis or diseases like uh, COVID-19 life and environmental sciences, education and research, business and banking, where forecasting is very important, and finally, in government and politics. These are the staff and the students in the Department of uh, Statistics. On the left here is uh, Dr. Warren Brittany. He's the current head of department. And in the center of this group is the previous head of department, Professor Gary Sharp. And you can see some students at the bottom. Educating for life and work is the motto of statistics, but it's also the motto of the faculty of science. And I think that wraps up what I wanted to talk about my particular school. And I'm going to hand over to um, Dr. Derek Dupree to talk about his school. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Professor Wesson. Um, uh, good evening to the uh, Eden FM listeners and to the, um, the people out there in the um, webinar world who are participating and viewing this uh, presentation. 
Um, my name is Derek Dupree, and I'm the director of the School of Environmental Sciences in the science faculty. Uh, the School of Environmental Sciences, as you can see from these pictures, has to do with uh, being in the, the outside world, in the real world. And uh, one of the questions that you might ask is why is it important to study the environmental sciences? Well, the environmental sciences deals with the picture that you can see on the screen at the moment. For those of you who can't see the picture the uh, uh, on Eden FM, the, uh, it's a picture of the world, the, the planet that we live on. As far as we know, this is the only habitable planet in the universe. There presumably are others, but we don't know anything about them yet. And uh, this is where we live. It's got a very uh, fragile environment that we have to look after and ensure is going to continue to work for as long as uh, we, we'd like it to. I mean, and that really, that, that, that is the important point here. It's up to us to make sure that this thing continues to work and continues to support life for as long as possible. Uh, the environmental sciences uh, consists of a number of different departments at the university, agriculture and game ranch management, uh, botany, geosciences, which is a combination of geology and geography, and then oceanography, which is a postgraduate degree. We don't have an undergraduate degree in oceanography, although we are thinking of starting up an honors uh, program in oceanography. And then lastly, but not least, is zoology. When it comes to agricultural management, it's presented as a diploma, both in Port Elizabeth and in George. Um, I'm responsible for the, the uh, diploma program in uh, Port Elizabeth. And uh, we deal with both livestock, by way of animals and crops. And we also consider um, agriculture from a commercial point of view, uh, small holding point of view and subsistence farming. This particular picture is, uh, was taken at one of the open days a few uh, years ago. Um, it's just here to make you jealous of what you could be doing rather than sitting at home um, watching this presentation. Air Ranch Management is also a diploma given in Port Elizabeth. You just heard from uh, um, Dr. Schmidt that uh, they are no longer going to be presenting the diploma from as of uh, next year. The diploma will only be presented in Port Elizabeth at the Addo campus. And um, it is a, it's, it's got to do with game ranch management, which has to do with um, managing the ranch for commercial gain. And uh, that, that includes hunting of the animals. The geosciences um, is you can get a degree in either geography or geology. And there are a whole lot of different things that you can study. There's just a small sample of some of the, the topics that we are uh, we deal with in the geosciences. This particular picture shows the students on a field trip and uh, in most of the subjects in the environmental sciences, in fact, all of them, you get to spend quite a lot of time out in the field. And this is an example of gully erosion. That's a problem in various parts of South Africa and particularly in the Eastern Cape. And the students have been taken out there to have a look at this and how it can be remedied. Uh, a geology example, the students go out and have a look at various um, rock formations. This one is a rock formation in the Cape Foldbelt re uh, region. And you can see how the, the rock has been uh, deformed because of pressure. The botany department is a degree program. Um, botanists study anything that photosynthesizes, anything that will take light energy and convert it into chemical energy is studied by um, botanists. So we study algae, plants, physiology, various other aspects that you can see on the right hand side of the screen. This particular picture I just included because it's very pretty. I'm a botanist, we like pretty things. And those are the Seerberg Mountains in the distance. Our students also like getting their feet wet. The person standing on the left hand side is one of our postgrad students who is now graduated and then gone off to get a job. And he works as a lecturer in the uh, in the botany department at uh, Witwatersrand University. Zoology, 
studies everything from very large animals like elephants and whales all the way down to insects and crabs and much, 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 much more. There are a huge number of animals. There are more than four times the number of beetles than there are the number of species of plants. This is the zoology department at National Marine Week. So we get involved in outreach programs where we um, uh, take our uh, equipment and we take our uh, expertise and students to go and talk to, to students and to introduce them to some of the wonders of the biological world. Here are some careers that will be relevant to both biologists and botanists. Um, you can be a teacher, marine biologist, you can work on game farms, in ecotourism, environmental management, fisheries, conservation, nature reserve manager, and there are a whole lot more. These are three, the, the next three slides are of uh, th three pamphlets that we hand out to students. This one is on uh, marine biology. So we have, uh, we don't have a degree in marine biology, but if you study at our university, you can walk away with a degree specializing in marine biology. You can also study environmental management and a lot of our students at the end of their degrees are uh, proficient in that field. We also have um, sorry, let's go back to that uh, conservation biology where a lot of our students are involved. Oceanography, as I've said, is a um, is a postgraduate department, uh, which I happen to be the head of. And if you have a look at this slide, and for those of you who can't see it, it's a slide of the Earth again, but it's from a different view. And anybody looking at this would be would be hard pressed to uh, accept that it is actually the Earth because it's taken from the other side of the Earth than is normally viewed. So normally you have Africa sitting in the middle, um, and then the uh, the other continents wrap around the side. And you can see at the bottom of the picture you actually have North America, and the the left hand side you have South America, and at the top you have Antarctica. Now you might think that it's strange to have the thing upside down like that, but I put it in this way on purpose because one of the things that you get to realize when you're a, a, an undergrad student at the university is that sometimes you have to look at the world in a different way. There's no reason why the, the, the globe has to be viewed with uh, the northern hemisphere in the north and the southern hemisphere in the south. It could have been the other way around. There's a picture of uh, Professor Ronell Nell, who is a zoologist. Uh, who studies marine life and this is her hanging in the water looking down at all the, the splendors of the marine organisms. So why study it in NMU? Uh, we have a very good quality education, it's excellent. Whenever I say that I always sound like Donald Trump, we have an excellent quality education at a reasonable cost. We have the ocean, the reputation of the faculty and the institution is good. We have friendly and very helpful staff. We are student centered. We care about the student safety and our staff safety. Uh, I didn't put the ocean in by accident twice. I put, the, put it in twice because to me, the ocean is very important and it's also a big draw card for us. We are, an ocean, we are a campus that's right next to the ocean, right next to the sea, and that gives us lots of opportunities to work in that environment. It's also a great environment to study. The last three slides I've got here are of some people who have earned honorary doctorates from our university. The first one is Dr. Sylvia Earle, who is a marine biologist, and she's famous for all sorts of reasons. She's got all sorts of records for deep diving. She spent, uh, uh, I can't remember the exact time, a whole, uh, I think it was about nine months in, an, in, in a, in a marine uh, habitat underwater. Uh, we have Professor Philip Tobias, who died a couple of years ago, unfortunately, uh, who is well known for the research that he did on the evolution of humans, of um, hominins. And uh, he uh, is it was particularly involved in working with uh, Lewis Leakey uh, on the research that he did. And then finally here you have Sir David Attenborough, who I'm, our sure, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, he got an honorary doctorate from the university in 2011. 
that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for paying attention to me and, to, and for listening. I'll now hand, hand you back to uh, into the very capable hands of our Dean, Professor Miranga. Unmute. Thank you very much to all the presenters, our directors of schools in the Faculty of Science. Um, I want to again thank you for being with us through the presentation. I would like to again acknowledge the presence of the Eden FM listeners. We are now going to the questions and answers sessions and uh, I will be reading your questions that you have posted on the Q&A uh, chat to our capable directors of schools. Um, I'm going to start by the most important two questions that uh, I thought perhaps while our directors are uh, getting a break, I will be able to answer those questions. The first one, for the sake of all audience, including those who are listening through uh, radio, is the question that has been posted is due to the COVID-19, are students going to university in 2021 or will it be online? That's a very important question given what is happening this year. Uh, we are not planning to continue with full online in the future. We are planning to have a blend, uh, which means the lessons that we have learned now uh, going online, there will be other courses that will be offered fully online once we get approval from the Department of Higher Education. But the majority of our modules, our courses will still be by blended learning, meaning both online and face-to-face -face consultation with tutors and labs. Uh, that's for question one. For question two, uh, I see there is a question which says I have been accepted provisionally. Is MBT still relevant this year? Uh, Nelson Mandela University have moved to a new system which is an applicant score where we look at your score that you will have obtained. So, so MBT uh, it's, it's, it's not used at the moment. We are using the applicant score that you will have uh, uh, obtained uh, and research has been done on this topic and the applicant score that we are using was based on that research. Uh, let me now go to Prof Chen Tu. A uh, couple of questions related to your presentation. If you can address them um, uh, at once, I will give them to you. Uh, the first one is, does NMU offer cosmetic chemistry? And the second one is for microbiology, uh, the prerequisites, can students still choose or is it mandatory to do um, uh, uh, chemistry and mathematics regardless? That's another question. And another question is on forensic science, uh, Prof Chen Chu, is forensic sciences a postgraduate program. Uh, let me stop there and uh, ask uh, Prof Chen to, to address these questions. Uh, thank you, Prof Moronga. Um, the first one on cosmetic chemistry. Uh, what we have in, in the chemistry department is an honors program in formulation science. Now, cosmetics fall under formulation science, so it will be one of the programs of the courses involved in the in the program, uh, which is delivered within our institute here. But there's way more than just cosmetics. Also, you can formulate a lot of things. Even drugs can be made into into pills so that they can be delivered better. So there's a lot of things that happen in terms of formulation science as well as making all sorts of products like sanitizer that is trending nowadays. Uh, it's also a formula, that's also a formulation. So cosmetics would fall under the 
honors in formulation science, which we have in the chemistry department. And in terms of microbiology, prerequisites would be chemistry, chemistry one, zoology one, botany one, and some maths and physics. It doesn't have to be the full maths or the full physics. A half maths and a half physics, those would be good enough uh, to take with zoology, botany, and chemistry one if you want to move on to microbiology or biochemistry for that matter, or physiology. In terms of forensic science, it is a multidisciplinary field. You would have noticed that chemists get involved, physiologists get involved, biochemists, microbiologists, which means you need all these skills because the matters that you may be dealing with are multifold or multidisciplinary. And I know Nelson Mandela was, was looking into this question of designing an honors in, for, in forensic science, I think around 2013, 2014. But that discussion didn't go very far because we realized that there's a lot that needs to go into a forensic science in terms of it being a multidisciplinary program. But nonetheless, these different disciplines come and contribute in forensic science in their own way or another. But currently, we do not have a program in forensic science. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Chentu. Um, uh, let me come to you, Dr. Schmidt. There are some questions related to your presentation. Um, starting with this one, if I start Game Ranch Management at George in 2021, uh, will I finish my diploma in ADO? That's, that's the first question. And the next one, uh, uh, Dr. Schmidt, is will I be able to change to nature conservation diploma after doing um, a, a first year of game ranch management? Um, and and the, 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 the last one for, for now for you to consider, Dr. Schmidt, is I have sent an email to George Admissions. Uh, what next? Uh, if you could just guide that uh, particular uh, 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 applicant, uh, that would be good. Thanks, Dr. Schmidt. Thank you very much. Thank you for those questions. Um, whether if you you um, started with game ranch management in 2021 on the George campus, uh, would you be able to carry on with it on the George campus, or would you have to move over to the Addo campus? Um, if you 2021 is the last year that we are off offering it, but what we mean by that is that's the last year that you can actually register for it. So if you do register next year as a first year, you will be able to continue with it on the George campus until you have finished your diploma. There won't be any need for you to go over to the Edo campus unless you so wish. Um, then would you be able to change over from Game Ranch Management to Nature Conservation after, uh, say, a year of study? Um, well, if you want to change from one diploma to another, you have to meet the admission requirements of the diploma that you want to change to. Now, the uh, admission requirements for the Game Ranch Management um, program is slightly different to the Nature Conservation one. If my memory serves me correctly, um, you do not need um, any of the sciences. Um, to get into the game round management program, but you do need to get, you do need a science metric subject to get into the nature conservation um, diploma. So that could be problematic if you wanted to change over from game round to nature conservation. But if you do meet the requirements from the start for the nature conservation program, then you certainly would be able to change from game round to nature conservation. After having changed after a year, you would get credit for some of your modules, but not all of them because the diplomas are different and they haven't got exactly the same first years. Although with some of the modules, they do overlap and certainly for those you'd be able to get credit. And then lastly, uh, I think the last question was that somebody had applied to George admissions and, and what now? Um, 
obviously you have not had a reply yet, I would say please be patient. Um, you did uh, hopefully see the email link um, that it's George admissions in plural at mandela.ac.za that you have to email. So please try that again. Um, if you do not come right, then you would be welcome to email me as well and I could see to it that um, your inquiry gets sent through to George admissions. My email would be Anton full stop Schmidt S-C-H-M-I-D-T at mandela.ac.za. Thanks, I hope that answers the questions. Yes, uh, th thank you very much. Um, in the interest of time, uh, which, which has come to an end, I would just like to say that all the other questions will be answered offline uh, out of this webinar. Please keep on following them up. I would like to thank all the presenters for today and all our listeners through uh, FM, uh, which is uh, Eden FM, and all the participants for your participation here and for asking those really important questions. Thank you very much. We had a wonderful and interactive webinar and we wish you to really join us in Mandela uh, in future, uh, starting from next year. And please don't hesitate to contact us through those avenues, website, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, email as well. Thank you very much and have a nice evening further.